Hi, I'm Charles and I'm a beekeeper that loves old bee equipment. Today we'll be visiting my local bee equipment distributor, Free State Bees, picking up a new box, making a cool discovery for our next video, and then taking some time to discuss different fasteners and wood joints and bee equipment. You know, the kind of knowledge that you can use at clubs to woo men and women. This is Free State Bees at Crownsville Gardens, which is located here in Central Maryland. Although it is the off season right now in February, they're open on Wednesdays and Fridays, which is ideal uh, because right now we're in maintenance season. Uh, this is the time of year when beekeepers are most often repairing old equipment and assembling new equipment. Free State Bees is a Man Lake distributor, and like all beekeeping distributors, has seen a significant amount of supply issues uh, ever since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. I love that you can just buy a packet of fondant here for your bees. Very important during winter. Often you can also purchase assembled components for a little bit more. For frames, that can be an amazing time saver. Now, let's look at the joints on these. Langstroth boxes have relied on box joints since their inception in the 1850s. A good question is why? It is a strong joint, but part of the reason is historical. In the 1850s, glues were usually made from animal byproducts and even vegetables. These glues were prone to failing over time. Modern wood glue joints are often stronger than the wood itself, but craftsmen and manufacturers had to rely on strong box or even dovetail joints uh, in past equipment. The nail is still the most common fastener for hive boxes even 170 years after the invention of the Langstroth box. They are one of the most common culprits for failure for joints so we'll discuss that further in the video. Here we have a nuke box kit where it has one five frame nuke and you can see that the sides use rabbit joints uh, as opposed to using box joints. Um, that is more common in nukes, I'd argue, than it is with regular hive components. Sure, you can go find ones with teeth, but with modern glues, this, this works fine, and I'd argue is a little easier to assemble. I see that Man Lake's bottom boards do not use a tongue and groove slat system the way that most closed bottom boards do. Today, we're here to grab an eight frame deep box, but Let's look around. They have all sorts of foundation for every size, whether you want wax foundation or plastic. They also have screened and closed bottom boards, and since 2000, screen bottom boards have really taken off as a way to combat varroa and ensure extra ventilation for the hive in summertime when dehydrating honey. I wanted to show you different frames, but the shop's new cat, Tom, accosted me for pets, and I never cut cat content whenever I get it. Here's some fume boards and trap outs. Here we have suits and gloves. And I was tickled to see corks. This is an older beekeeper thing where they used to drill additional entrances and then fill them with corks in wintertime. It used to be a lot more common and you still see it in older equipment. And here we have Varroa treatments. I was very thankful to my local distributor because they had Formic Pro back in 2020 when Daydan had like a four to six week wait. Beekeeping equipment distributors have always played a prominent role in modern beekeeping. A salesperson can help you get all the components together for your first hive or give you advice. Catalogs from companies such as AI Root, Daydan, Woodman, and Kelly have always been part of the forefront of the business, but your local distributors are where you would go when you needed equipment now or wanted to save money on shipping. It's sad to see that internet sales have eaten so deeply into this niche market. We're blessed to have two small shops here in Central Maryland, but many regions just don't have distributors any longer. The increases in the price of lumber have also impacted the costs for both beekeeping equipment manufacturers as well as distributors. I got to go around back where Free State Bee stores their own beekeeping equipment. 
Here we have a box that was inspected back in 2015 and looks solid and sturdy after at least seven years of use. That says a lot about what solid maintenance can do for you. I love their frame rack here. Uh, everything is just ready to go. And that's when I spotted it, a Hive branded Clulo. Those that watch my channel have seen the Clulo Hive restoration video with the same brand. It belonged to one of the founders of the Anne Arundel County Beekeepers Association, the late Reverend Clulo. After speaking with the owner, they assured me that more than 12 years ago they purchased the equipment from him before his passing. There were three boxes in total that we spotted, a homemade medium and two shallows. They kindly gave them to me uh, so that I could add them to the Clulo hive in my garden. So now we have another repair video to do on this equipment. Well, we're getting toward the part of the video where we're going to assemble some things. And today we are going to assemble an 8 frame deep. Now, many of you out there may have never seen an 8 frame deep before because most 8 frame hives I've encountered have all been mediums. Uh, I have yet to actually see an 8 frame shallow. I'm sure they exist. Um, why would somebody go with an 8 frame? Well, especially when you have beekeepers that don't want to lift really heavy boxes, older beekeepers, smaller beekeepers, beekeepers with back issues, uh, you're reducing the weight of those boxes by about 10%. And uh, I'd say the deep is a little less common because that, that still can be a little too heavy. It's better to just go with all mediums. But I happen to have two 8 frame hives and I need to move over this spring uh, a couple of nukes uh, into those. But unfortunately, the nukes are all deep frames. So I, I could jury rig something to work and make it temporary, but I, I'd rather just build this box and move them over to it and make it easy. Now, when we assemble these, how are we going to do it? One, we are going to use wood glue. There are beekeepers that say, hey, you don't need to use wood glue that is excessive you know what use it makes longer um, more sturdy hives it's a good thing to use uh, and I have met a couple that decided they were just gonna glue the boxes together and now that's a bad idea <laughs> that comes apart after a couple of years uh, so both extre extremes there are bad uh, definitely try to fasten them so what do we fasten a hive with? Well, a lot of the time, the hive will come with nails, and it came with these nice outdoor ones, but these really don't have great teeth. Now, they're a good depth. They are a good depth for a nail. But I've often pulled those out after enough time of movement and bowing and even a little bit of rot. They just don't hold well. In fact, I would recommend just don't use nails at all, but if you are going to insist on a nail, use a guy like this. One of these spiral nails, they do an amazing job to where you'll, you'll never pull that joint out again. However, I personally like to use deck screws. I like to use deck screws because they are an outdoor screw and they sink into the wood nice to where I can then paint over them. And the thing is, is they are stronger than a, uh, a nail. But the thing I like is, you know, I might be able to undo them in the future. I might be able to come and use my screw gun and pull them out if I ever needed to patch something in about five to ten years. Uh, it makes the process a lot easier. And you just get a sturdier box. And let's say you have a corner that's pulling out a little bit because of rot. You can then take that screw out and then put another screw a larger one in its place. Uh, usually dip it in some wood glue first uh, and then put it in there. But uh, it, it makes maintenance over time easier too. Now here's one of the most common mistakes in assembling your hive equipment. The handles go on the outside. Um, when some folks do box joints they do them in a way where it's slightly offset. To where it makes it impossible to put it on uh, on backwards. That's not the case with this type, with this particular box. Uh, I believe this is a Man Lake box. Um, it's a good sturdy one, but they don't do the edges to make it to where you can't accidentally do that. Uh, I've done it once or twice with boxes. Uh, it sucks, especially after you slam some nails in there, because once you get those nails in, uh, 
it's just not coming out anymore. So we're going to use our good friend wood glue from my obnoxiously large container. And it's good to kind of get it on all the walls of the teeth. You don't need to flood it. Remember, I keep saying it. You only need just enough wood glue because if you put too much, it bonds to itself and not the wood. And I love this little rubber brush. It's so great because it's reusable. And you can just wait for it to dry and then just knock the uh, old glue off of it. But we got our first joint. And now we can push it together. Here we go. Got a little excess. That's cool. We'll wipe that off at the end. All right, let's knock a few screws into here. These normally come pre-drilled, but don't be surprised if you find equipment that isn't. It happens. Don't split it if you can help it. That's another reason to use wood glue, because that can hide or fix that sin. Up at the top here, there often isn't a hole. But man, you know, th this joint right at the top... Sorry, my cat's in the, the tripod stand there. But uh, right where this joins, it often kind of fails, and this lip can come out. A screw right there can fix that, or at least a nail. But I would drill a pilot, because remember, it's it's rather thin. So drill something before you, uh, before you start knocking nails or screws in there. Well, there are kids, now I've done it. Uh, I split it here at the bottom, but it's not too big a deal. I drove the impact driver a little too hard. So the way that we're going to repair this is we're going to put some sort of nail or screw into where it goes up here but we're going to make it to where the hole can still clear it that way it will clamp this we could also clamp it overnight and try it again but you know i'd, I'd rather do that and make it a little bit more secure so let's do that all right we're back to our problem child this joint and i'm going to use one of these nails that came with the hive I'm going to drive it right here. See, it's, it's already coming off. So we're probably going to put a second nail in it too. That way we attach this from the bottom. Hope for the best. There we go. Well, that's stabilized and we should be able to still get a screw right in there. Now right, let's see how this goes. It, Ah, oh, success. Okay, it's not split still. Let's wipe off the excess over here. That way the box isn't so ugly when we paint it. Now I'm going to spare you putting each of these corners on because if you could do one, you can do all of them. But I will remind you to avoid putting those side plates on backwards because you just won't have a handle then. I mean, it'll work, but you won't have a handle. And that sucks. Here we have another common problem. The teeth just don't line up exactly right. Now you can tap it with any regular old hammer, but I would prefer to use a mallet and tap it very slowly. You can break uh, the box joints uh, off of these. Uh, fun fact too, uh, with older equipment, if you're prying boxes apart, it's not uncommon if you pry from the corners to snap one of those teeth off if it's a little rotten. So definitely definitely be a little careful with the corner itself. It's a stronger corner than if you used a, a butt joint or a, a rabbit joint, but it's far from perfect. One more pro tip, do not use drywall screws. Drywall screws are a common one I see uh, people use when they use screws on hives. That is an indoor screw. And I've seen over time, the heads on these guys will snap right off. I remember years ago when I put together my first hive boxes. And I had watched these get assembled on YouTube. Uh, in fact, I... I was and still am a big fan of a very old early 90s piece done by Dr. Delaplane, A Year in the Life of an Apiary. And I must have watched that series uh, on YouTube 
probably 60, 70 times. It was just so soothing. And I was so excited for the coming year in keeping bees. And I, I got my equipment around Christmas time and was just the, the Christmas morning. I, I actually started uh, putting the hive together and then painted the parts uh, around New Year's and then built my rack outside and got it. And then I was waiting months for bees. I'd imagine every beekeeper out there has some memory of assembling their first piece of equipment and just getting ready for that, uh, that first season. Now, there are plenty of folks that jumped into beekeeping the minute they met a swarm and they learned about it and became uh, intrigued by it. In fact, that's, that's what happened with A.I. Root himself. Initially, he was a jeweler running a jewelry store in Medina, Ohio, uh, before he, he became one of the most illustrious names uh, that there's ever been in beekeeping. Um, one landed right on a windowsill there and he just became fascinated about it and apparently he was asking everybody that came by the shop about bees. Uh, one of his assistants there helped him catch the swarm but unfortunately they didn't stay. But what did stay with him was really a lingering fascination with bees. And it's really neat to hear his first account and the parallels that most beekeepers have with their first bees and their first hive and really how they got into this whole this whole crazy business of keeping angry stingy insects in boxes. And now we're returning to these and I'm not going to do a video here because that's probably going to come sometime this week. But uh, we have these Clulo boxes that will complete uh, the Clulo hive that I have over at my garden. It turns out that uh, the Reverend Clulo has quite a few boxes around Anne Arundel County uh, here in Maryland. And uh, this one, I see uh, MD86. I'm guessing if that's 1986. Uh, so this, this guy is a little bit younger than me, but only a little bit. Um, has some teeth on it that are a little busted. I don't see rot right along the bottom. It's also not the sturdiest of boxes, you can see. Shouldn't be able to do that. So, that's an issue. Um, I'm also pretty sure that I could just pull some of these nails out and I, I should be able to do that. And this is a good example for this video of why don't you really stick with screws? Because I shouldn't be able to just pull that nail out. Now, that's pretty similar to the nail that my other hive there came with. Now, this box has an excuse. Uh, it's, it's getting close to 40 years old now, so it can have some loose uh, nails to it, but they really don't take that long to uh, get loose most of the time. So, I know I shouldn't be able to pull that out that easy. Uh, so, a lot of what we're going to do with this stuff, um, we're just going to fix some wood. Uh, some of it will need new fasteners, of course. Uh, some of the teeth are just a little little rotted and uh, we can solve that. I, I don't think we need to patch the teeth, but we definitely need to kind of glue and clamp them and get them nice and strong again. Uh, the bottom box here, which suffers some of the same ailments, uh, this is a medium. It has a long split right here and that split is so prominent that I thought, you know, maybe it's a patch. And looking in the box and looking at the diagonal to it and how well it goes together, it is not a patch. I assure you that it is not a patch. Uh, the only fasteners attaching this are on the front and the back. Because if you look, these are rabbit jointed together. They don't use box joints. Uh, I suspect this is one that he made, uh, made at home. Um, and the reason I believe that is because the interior rabbit... And I'm not sure how well you see this on camera. This was cut too deep and so somebody installed this strip uh, of wood right there. Uh, so I guess when he, he made the box he had that error. Um, that's cool. We It works. Um, so we're going to not only have to add new fasteners to get the box 
get the box nice and square again. So we're going to use some new fasteners to get the box square again. We're going to sand it down. Uh, I don't think we need to pound all the nails out of it. And I'll be honest with you, if I start hitting this with a hammer, I might break the box. Um, maybe. Well, that, that's, that's for uh, tomorrow, uh, Charles, to try to solve. Not today, Charles. But it's, it's in pretty good shape for its age. And uh, I'm sure that we can get this together, uh, get some frames in it, paint it gold to match the other clue little parts, and we'll get this in the bee yard this year. So, but we'll wait till next time for that.